In this lecture, I will show you how to draw the chair conformation for cyclohexane, a six carbon ring. Now, it's composed of six carbons, so that means we have six carbon-carbon bonds. And we also have 12 hydrogen atoms. Six of those 12 are in the axial position, and the other six are in the equatorial position. So axial simply means pointing up or pointing down. So whenever we draw our chair conformation for cyclohexane, we have to follow these three steps. So let's begin with step one. Draw three pairs of parallel lines, and each line represents a bond. So opposing bonds are parallel. So let's show you what that means. So our first pair of parallel lines are slightly slanted, our second pair of parallel lines pointing upward, and our final pair connects our ring. And this is our cyclohexane. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms, and one, two, three, four, five, six carbon-carbon bonds. So this is our carbon backbone. Let's go to step two. In step two, we want to draw the six axial bonds. Three of those axial bonds pointing up and three of those pointing down. Now, how do we know which one's pointing up and which one's point down? Well, easy. We always begin with this carbon. Let's say this is carbon number one. Carbon number one, the axial bond goes upward. So here we have going up. Next one, goes down and we alternate up, down, up, down until we get back to our carbon one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is our axial carbon one, axial carbon two, axial carbon three, axial carbon four, axial carbon five, and axial carbon six. Now this subscript A simply means axial. So on to step three. Finally, draw six equatorial atoms. Each equatorial bond is parallel to the two carbon-carbon bonds one bond away. So let's see exactly what that means. Let's represent our equatorial atoms with the color red. So, let's go back to carbon one. Let's begin with carbon one. So the bond in carbon one should be parallel to the two carbon-carbon bonds one bond away. So we begin here. So one bond away or one carbon away is this carbon and this carbon. So our line should be parallel to either of these two bonds. So that means our first equatorial position points parallel to either this one or this one. So let's label it as simply A, uh, H. Next, carbon 2. So we, we're at this carbon. We want to go one carbon to the right, one carbon to the left. So it's parallel to either of these two bonds. So let's make this one parallel. Let's label it as H. Third one, third carbon position. So we're here at this carbon. So that means one bond this way and one bond this way. So we want our bond to be parallel to either of these two lines two bonds. So this is our third H equatorial atom. Fourth one. So the same story. We start at this one, one over, one over. It should be parallel to either of these two. So one over this way, one over this way. Now, next one. So one over, one over. It should be parallel to either of these two. So let's go down. And the same story for this one. One over, one over. So it should be parallel to one of these and this is our last equatorial. So we should have six axial, one, two, three, four, five, six, and six equatorial, one, two, three, four, five, six. So once again, we have 12 H atoms, six axial, six equatorial, and six carbon atoms. And they're connected in a ring-like fashion. So opposing bonds, opposing sigma bonds between the carbon-carbon are parallel. So these two are parallel, so let's represent them with purple. So these two are parallel, then these two are parallel, and finally these two 
are parallel. So opposing sides are parallel. So your first step is to draw the carbon backbone. Next step, label all the axial positions by alternating, starting with this carbon one and alternating up, down, up, down, up, down. And finally, we finish off with our six equatorial positions. And each equatorial bond is parallel to the bond one carbon over. So either this one or this one for this specific carbon. And we, and we go around our ring until we get back to our first position. And this is our chair conformation for our cyclohexane. So, this is our chair conformation. And this is the most stable conformation out of all the conformations.